Hello everyone, it's Rackman John here, and I have a very interesting article to share with you today. I'm not sure how many of you have heard of the publication called Van Magazine, named after Ludwig uh, Van Beethoven, of course. But they describe themselves as an independent online classical music magazine, and they publish weekly in English and German. They love strong personalities and a radical point of view. I mean, cool. If you're familiar with my channel at all, uh, so do I. In fact, we have a fair bit in common. You know, they do lists, I do lists. They do reviews, I do reviews too. Actually, I was just reading through their ranking of all of the Scarlatti Sonatas. Um, I've got to say, it, it's not a particularly nuanced explanation. Most of them are just left blank. Some of them are given maybe two to three, maybe five words, if they're lucky, uh, of explanation. So it's hardly... Hardly detailed. But in some of the other work, I can definitely see their importance. They focus a lot on uh, women in music, the weird and wonderful, um, plenty of alternative uh, stuff, uh, of course, the never ending lists. Um, not much about list, I'm afraid, but a lot more about opera, leads. Yeah, it's it's fairly cheap, but easily consumable. It's their latest piece, however, Meet the Pianist Revolutionising Classical Music by Sharon Sue that's really captured my attention. Sharon Sue's little biography at the bottom says she's noted for being both personable and insanely talented, probably humble and approachable as well, I'm not sure. Uh, so she's an acclaimed classical pianist and recording artist, and she's based in Los Angeles. Now, looking at her other work... Oh, you'll notice that this is the only work she's done. So, maybe she's a guest writer. I'm not sure. So, going back to Sharon's flagship article, we're going to meet a character called Key Playerson, which is already ironic, it's up there with Vincetto Maltempo, I think that's how you pronounce the name, uh, for unfortunate pianist names. In true freelance journalist style, we get a quaint little introduction to the subject. The article begins with the, uh, Lovely description, offstage, wearing ironed jeans, polished dress shoes, and a dark blazer, Key Playerson looks more like a regular Joe than a new talent challenging the world of classical music. Already, it sounds like a public servant has thrown up on their keyboard. It, like, it serves its purpose, but anyway with my attention appropriately captured and held, and my disbelief of a young talent I've never even heard before firmly suspended, well, I continued. Turns out that early this year he swept the international Queen Elsa competition. Uh, so he won every prize in every category, and in a Cinderella twist, he also convinced the judges, or inspired, it says in the article, to revoke the medals of every previous champion who ever competed. Wow. But keep in mind, everyone listening, he is not a prodigy, and he'll tell you that. Maybe you can hear in my voice I'm slightly bitter that not only is this guy apparently incredibly talented, but his family also owns a Steinway. It's a real shame to his story that he doesn't have a famous relative or something that inspired him from a young age. His childhood piano teacher with a seemingly unassuming name uh, spoke highly of him. Although she's only a neighborhood teacher, uh, apparently her students have done very well. In a genre-defining, mind-blowing power move, he refuses to play Gershwin's Rhapsody in Blue instead playing Gershwin's way less known concerto in F. Our young star also has some very progressive political views. 
supporting gay marriage and the signing of the Emancipation Proclamation. Which, you know, maybe he's going a bit too far there, especially with the second one, I'm not sure. His insights into the device of classical music as a complete corpus of, uh, or a representation rather, of the human condition is profound. Um, as he says, classical music is a universal language, from the music of 18th century Austria to the music of 19th century Germany. And then he goes on to say that no one who's studied or appreciated classical music has ever gone on to oppress or hurt other people. Ah, I see then. He's a Leninist. This musical Mary Sue has some hip-happening plans. The crazy young man wants to record the entirety of Beethoven's 32 piano sonatas, uh, including the elusive, almost legendary, Hammerklavier. Uh, he describes it as a diamond in the rough. He identifies closely with the underrated genius of Beethoven. He's hoping to eventually record them all. And to end the article, the virtuous Sharon Sue gives her full confidence that Key Playerson will be able to accomplish these daunting tasks. So, I'm going to leave you with one question. What on earth just happened? I just checked the date. It's not April the 1st, so it's not a fool's joke. There's some sketchiness, uh, judging by the fact this is Sharon's first and only article. The only explanation I can come up with for the production of a masterpiece, such as this, of clear and obvious satire, is that Sharon, or someone who wrote the article for Sharon, perhaps a user submission, was, in internet terms, doing a little trolling. And the fact that the article was not taken down, it's been up for f about five days, I think, has not been taken down, uh, has not been edited, and has not been, you know, they haven't obliterated the website in order to get rid of this embarrassing piece of literature, which is mind-boggling, leads me to believe that this is some kind of statement against the current nature of online journalism. Essentially sending the message of, they'll print anything these days. Especially considering the, frankly, lazy articles on Schubert and, you know, the lists. I make lists too, but I put lots of effort into my lists. And also I don't, you know, claim to be a musical professional, and you also don't pay a subscription to read my stuff. <laughs> At any rate, um, what can we take from this? It's all speculation on my behalf. Why something like this would ever feel the need to come into existence. But I'm going to urge myself to brush my little conspiracy theories aside and just have a laugh. This was really funny. Um, and I'm glad that I was able to share it with you. Uh, this has been Rackman John. Thank you very much for uh, watching slash listening slash tuning out whenever uh, it gets boring. I'm sorry, I'm still working my vocal delivery and I'm a bit sick right now. But uh, thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video, which ironically will probably be a list. <laughs>